You don't connect with them at the nail salon. You go to the park and roll down the hill with them because when you enter their world, they look at you differently. You connect with them. You watch how they play and you join in. You enter their world. Don't try and drag them into your world. I have an 18-month-old who wakes up more than three times at night and wants to play. I'd like to know how many waking nights is too much of a time. You don't need to do any of that. They want to play. So what if they want to? It doesn't mean you're going to. Do you know what I would do if they're 18 months old? I wouldn't really recommend my bedtime battles course. You might want to try it, but it, it starts at two and it goes to eight. Um, it's one of my mini toddler courses in the link above or on description in YouTube here. So um, <clears throat> if they're 18 months old, I would just go, if they wake up, I would just go in there and say, you're okay, pat them and say, you're okay, good night. And then I would just leave. I would do that every five minutes and then lengthen the time you go in there. That's controlled crying. But if they're not in a crib and they can escape, then you might want to check out that course. Because uh, that's all about them being in a bed and walking out. So, okay, my seven-month-old is biting and chewing on me. He's teething, seven-month-old, teething and getting six to... How do I get him to stop? He also grabs with Silica. You can't get them to stop that. Just have something else for them to chew on. Okay. Um, seven month old, you can't stop that. You just have to have something else to put in their mouth when they're going for you. So yeah, here you go. Here you go. They usually, I uh, can't really recommend stuff because I don't know what's out there and what doctors are recommending these days with babies. I'm very careful because they recommend, we used to do ice, like we'd put um, a teething ring in the freezer for a while and it would be like really cold. I don't even know if they're recommending that anymore. I can't keep up with what's going on out there. So my top five tips for parenting toddlers are child-proof your home so you never have to say no. Set up a toy rotation system so they're never bored. And you enter their world to connect with them. You don't connect with a toddler under the age of three as a toddler, in my mind. You don't connect with them at the nail salon. You go to the park and roll down the hill with them. Because when you enter their world, they look at you differently. You connect with them. You watch how they play and you join in. You enter their world. Don't try and drag them into your world. Um, and you stop with the mini therapy sessions. That is dragging them into your world. You know, when they're upset and you say, I know your big feelings and your big emotions, that's your world. Don't drag them into that mini therapy session road. It's just a disaster. Because when you're disciplining a, a toddler, it's got to be consistent, corrective actions. They are not about words. They're about actions. You meet them in their world, not yours. Um, you know that use your words, all that garbage. It's just ridiculous. Uh, in other words, be more like me. Find your inner adult. They don't have it yet. They're only two. Okay. And then number five is the most important one. Number number five tips for parenting toddlers is don't try and figure them out. They're not figure outable. They might even go like this and smear poop on the wall. Can you figure that one out? If you've only been in the world for two years, that first year you were a potato laying on a mattress. They're just forming. They're brand new, fresh human beings. A two-year-old that was breastfed still grabs for me when he's tired or upset. I've tried passive, but I won't take it. How do I break the cycle? Um, well, they're grabbing for you at two. I don't know how long ago they were you finish breastfeeding. Uh, if they're still grabbing, it doesn't matter. I would just wear different clothes so there's no access. Because at that age, they can actually get into your clothes, right? What I did with my daughter, she was 14 months when I weaned her. Um, my son weaned himself at 10 months. He just wasn't interested. He wanted the bottle so he could look around. He was doing that with my boobs. So that's why I was thrilled when he didn't want to breastfeed anymore. That was a real sign because my daughter was just in there like she never would have got off the boob. Uh, so at 14 months, I said, that's it. And I gave her a sippy cup. So I would suggest maybe replacing uh, whenever they go for the boob, you give them a sippy cup or something, maybe buy some crazy straw, something new and fun and just say, no, no more. Just make it very clear that no means no. Um, but with my daughter, um, I didn't sit down very often uh, when I was, I did it over. We went away for, uh, we were away for about a week or something. And uh, so we did it then. So my husband was around at the same time. So I didn't sit down very often. I made sure that whenever I knew she was going to want the boob, I made sure I was up and walking around. Also, I wore different clothes so she couldn't get into them as easily. And, um, and whenever she did go, I'd hold her. But if she did go for that, I'd say, no, no, go see daddy. And then I'd give her something else to like a sippy cup or something. So, yeah, it's just a process. It's not going to be easy. Everyone wants to know, what do I do in five minutes? It's a process. Might take a few days, a few weeks, whatever. Uh, my four and a half month old is suddenly refusing to sleep in his bassinet. He will only sleep in our arms. I embrace providing the comfort and getting all the snuggles, but we used to do it at least two hours of sleep or so. But we used to at least get two hours of sleep. What suggestions do you? Oh, so they keep waking up? Let me see. How old? Four and a half months. I don't want to tell you this, but yeah, you're not going to like this. Um, I, I kind of do whatever babies want. <laughs> this sounds ridiculous. 
uh, cause I'm such a leader and all that, but with babies, you know, I always say with, with children, 16 months and up as a toddler. And that's like, I kind of, um, meet their needs and manage their wants under 16 months. I tend to meet their needs and meet their wants because I am so hardcore bonding with them. Like that is my whole, my whole being is about bonding with that baby. So yeah, if they want to sleep in my arms, I did that with my daughter. She wanted to do the same thing. She slept with us till she was about eight months old. I don't think we got a good night's sleep for eight months. Um, but yeah, so I can't really answer that. Yeah, I meet their needs and meet their wants too when they're babies. Yeah, I did do controlled crying though at I think eight or 10 months I did controlled crying where you let them cry it out and you leave the room and then you keep going in every five minutes, but you're okay. And then you leave the room and then I'd sit outside the door and cry myself. I'm sure it was harder on me, uh, but yeah, sorry. It's not a very good answer. And I know that there's just certain things I, uh, babies, I have a real weakness for that because I'm all I'm thinking about is bonding with them and giving them whatever they want. If they cry, I pick them up. I had a friend once who said, why do you cry? Every time he cries, you pick him up. And I go, yeah, he's a baby. Wait till he's a toddler, you'll see a different mom. <laughs> so, all of a sudden, I'm starting to teach him right from wrong. I know you can't always get what you want, but when he was really little, yeah. How often would you rotate toys? Uh, would you do it in categories, blocks, lights up, toys? So, really good question, actually. I mix it all up. So, um, yeah, it, it depends. Like, I do it maybe once a week, but my kids, we were out and about a lot. Plus, we lived in Australia, so we were outside a lot. So, toys weren't as important there. Um, but I'd say I, with them, I did it maybe once every two or three months. But with uh, other kids, usually it seems to be once a week or once every two weeks, um, depending on what your lifestyle's like. But yeah, don't don't get caught up in how to do it. Just do it. Like, just make sure there's not a ton of toys out at any given time. So don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about it. And I never take away anything comforting. Like if they have a stuffed animal, a stuffy that they love and it's comforting, you never put that away. I never put away love, like something that makes them feel comfortable. So... Yeah, there's no steadfast rule for that. Uh, toddlers in a dance class that can't keep their hands to themselves. Um, toddler, under the age of three, that's what I consider a toddler. Three and over, I consider, three and four, I consider a preschooler. Um, so under the age of three, they can't get, uh, it's kind of normal. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say to that. What do you mean? They're just grabbing at everyone? Uh, okay, toddler, under the age of three, they're all about consistent corrective actions. So you're just going to have to be right there and say no and just constantly move their hand away. It's the only way. How do you teach your toddler to play independently and the best activities keep them busy? Okay, just look up YouTube, fun activities for toddlers. They have way more ideas than I would ever have. Um, anyway, so you get them to play independently by getting them started. Uh, so what you do is you go over and you start something with them. And then you say, okay, I'm just going to go do the dishes and I'll be back. You will be back, but you might not be back for an hour or so. So you start, get them started and then walk away as if you're going to come back, but then just don't go back. Uh, some kids are never really good at independent play. My daughter, um, was very much clingy. She wanted to be around me all the time. She was a super easy little girl, but she would just, she wasn't so much demanding, but if I wasn't with her, she'd just sit in a corner like this, look at me all sad. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas my son would go off and play for hours on his own, completely different personalities. So yeah, um, it's a personality thing. You know, they'll, they'll outgrow all that stuff. One day they won't want to be around you when they're teenagers. And you're going to look back on this clinginess and go, geez, I missed that. Toddlers with sibling rivalry. Okay, the worst thing you can do is do one-on-one -on -one time with children. When they're not getting along, you do one-on-one -on -one time, you're building resentment. So play with them all together and always play to the weakest link. Like, like, like uh, play to the youngest one's abilities. So you don't play where the older kid can do something the little one can't. And you never do anything competitive. Like don't pull out the Monopoly board if you're playing with your kids. <laughs> Everyone knows who's going to win the first round around the, around the thing there. So yeah, don't play anything competitive. Look up silly games with toddlers, silly things to do. We used to do the mini Olympics. So we'd hop around the house, see who could do that the longest. And they bonded by laughing at mom because everything we did was playing to them and their strengths, not mine. So how long could an old woman, or not then, I wasn't old then. I am now, but I wasn't. Like in my 30s, how long could I hop around on one foot compared to little kids? So they always win. And we always won at every game we played. Like, but they were fun. They weren't like really clear winner or loser. Um, so yeah. Play, doing the independent, uh, 
one-on-one -on -one time builds resentment. A head banging while throwing a tantrum for an 18 month old. Yeah, most of them do that. I mean, it's just the way it is. So check out, you might want to check out my uh, toddler tantrum busting course. It goes into that. You physically restrain them. You always ignore a tantrum. There's, there's a way of ignoring it, but you always ignore a tantrum, but you physically restrain them if they are harming themselves, harming someone else or damaging property. You still don't talk to them or look at them. You're just physically restraining them. 18 months, I'd pick them up and have them facing away from me. And I probably put my hand on the back of their head so they can't headbutt me. Um, and then just walk around. Just don't sing to them. Don't talk to them. Just walk around as if you don't even know they're there. You're just walking around. Oh, let me see. I might do those windows later. Or, you know, like you just don't even know they're there because um, you ignore tantrums. I always say uh, tantrums are just the crazy zone. They're not bad behavior. They go into the emotional crazy zone. So you ignore the crazy and reward the calm. As soon as they finish having a tantrum, oh, do you want to go read a book? So they'll eventually learn, wait a minute, you know, nothing happens while I'm acting like that. But as soon as I stop, all of a sudden we read a book or whatever. Any advice on taking away pacifiers? Yeah, do like I did, pull off the Band-Aid. I did it with my son. He was 18 months old. And I put all of his uh, dummies in a little bag. And I picked him up and I gave him the bag. And I says, okay, bye-bye. And we, I opened up the big wheelie bin lid and he threw them in. I said, bye-bye, no more because you're a big boy now. Close the lid and... Then I thought, oh, my God, I was ready for a storm. He never once asked for one once, not once. But every time he'd go like this, he'd look over at me and I'd look away. Like, there's no way I'd get eye contact when he was thinking about the dummies. So, But what I did was I also replaced them with sippy cups, so something else to do. You never just take something away. You replace it with something. Oh, I, God, I knew someone was going to ask about this. Advice to stop two-and-a-half-year-olds stop sucking thumb. Again, replace it with something else. That's a tough one because you can't take their thumb away, can you? But you can try every time they put their thumb, say, no, here you go. You can have this instead. Give them something else to do. Um, I knew someone who sucked his thumb. I think he just did it in his sleep as he got older. But he did it, I don't know, 10 or 12 years old. He was still doing it. It was just a habit. And he has no thumbprints because he sucked all the thumbprints off his thumbs. <laughs> I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it. Like I actually asked, uh, you could see, I had no thumbprints. Um, my almost three-year-old bites himself and he doesn't get what he wants. How do I help him? Oh, just say no when he goes to do it and physically restrain. They're only doing that to get attention, by the way. So you, you got to address it. If they're hurting themselves, hurting someone else, or damaging property, you have to physically restrain them during a tantrum. So yeah, um, some of them will make themselves throw up. Um, they'll go after you. Uh, <laughs> They'll throw something at the TV, anything to show you that they want to be in charge. So, yeah. My two-year-old gets very aloof in classes, doesn't mix with other kids, or won't go forward to pick up anything offered in class unless I go with them. Any advice? Is that behavior or personality? I'm always worried. Being, um, I think you're overanalyzing this. I'm going to read out my top five tips for parenting toddlers. You're calling them a toddler. Two, oh, two years old. So he's a toddler. Under the age of three is a toddler. Just a sec. Okay, these are my top five tips for parenting toddlers. And the last one is for you. Um, number one is you childproof your home so you never have to say no. Number two is you set up a toy rotation system so they're never bored. Number three is when you want to connect with a toddler, you do so in their world. Watch how they play and join in. You don't go to the nail salon. You enter their world. Don't expect them to enter yours. When you get good at this, connecting in their world, they just start to look at you differently. It's part of your leadership skills is playing with them in their world. Number three is it's sort of similar. When you're disciplining a toddler, you do so in their world. Their world is not words. Their world is actions. So they need consistent corrective actions to correct bad behavior because they learn through repetition. They're not going to learn the first time, maybe not even the 50th time, but hopefully by the 51st time or a little bit later even. And number four, well, I already said that one. Number five is stop trying to figure them out. That's the one that's for you. They don't make any sense. Okay. Toddlers are just brand new, fresh human beings. They're just forming. They've got one marble and some tumbleweed in here. They might even go like this and smear poop on the wall. Can you figure that one out? I can't. So yeah, they're just forming. They're brand new, fresh human beings. You're overthinking it. What if you have a climber? Cli There's four different things that they're born to do. One of them is climbing. So they're either going to never do these things or they're going to do them. Climbing. Another one is aggression. They're either going to be hitters or they're never going to do it. The other one is runners. Runners and climbers are often the same. They tend to not have a lot of fear, right? They're the ones who, if they take off, they're not looking behind to see where you are. And the last one is tantrums. Those are the four traits that they're either, it's not your fault that they do them, but you can work on getting rid of these traits. But yeah, climbing is one of them. With climbers, it's not going to be perfect. But what you do is you set, you um, move away anything that they can climb with. Okay, so that's obvious. 
Well, I'll tell you a funny story. Actually, I had a client uh, years ago and she could not find her 18 month old. I think it was a little girl, actually, could not find her little girl anywhere. She was close to calling the police. I mean, she looked everywhere in the house. All the doors were shut and locked. She could not figure it out. Anyway, she was just about to call the police and then she heard giggling. She went in the kitchen. Uh, this kid was on top of the fridge, 18 months old, had used her little toes, even though she had child locks and everything, she'd used her little toes to go up on the, I don't know what in the uh, drawers, I don't know. Anyway, she got up there, then she used the bread maker, which was right beside the fridge, and she was up on top of the fridge. What if she had fallen? Anyway, so this is what I suggest you do. Anything that they do use to climb with that you cannot move or childproof, put a bell on it. And even if it gets that bad, put a bell on your kid so that you always know where they are. Okay, it's about sound alerts. So yeah, it's, it's not perfect. No, they're climbers. It's just the way it is. They unfortunately need to have a couple falls under their belt before they start to learn, maybe even break an arm down the road. It's just the way it is, not down the road, but you know, as they get older, sometimes they'll do that too. But they're also the ones that usually become good gymnasts, they're athletes, because they have no fear. Um, they push past their bodies, like they're just really good at that stuff. So down the road, it might not be a bad thing. But right now, yeah, it's scary. You've got a two-year-old hits everyone so hard. How do I stop this? I do have a course on that, toddlers who hit. Just basically, you just it's consistent corrective action. Every single, the first time they hit, you say no and physically restrain them for a few seconds or whatever, like in a very serious but calm way. And then every time they go to hit, you've got to watch them like a hawk. You prevent the next hit and the next one, the next one, as much as possible. Eventually, they'll learn. But yeah, it's tricky. Should a two-year-old throw a tantrum? That is their language. If they get upset, some of them do, some of them don't. Okay. I don't know the percentage, but yeah, some kids will never have a tantrum. I never had one. My daughter never had one. My son was very good at them. So you're born at, you're just born to have them. So she, but you said, should they? No, they, they don't. It's not like it's a mandatory thing. Oh, there's something wrong with my child. They should be having tantrums. So it's not something that they should be doing. They're either born to have them or they're not, but there's ways of managing them. I have a tantrum busting course. If you're interested, that's in the link above. Okay. 11 month old hitting my face when excited. I know it's impulse, but do I need to stop? You can't do much with that. It just when they do, you just hold their hands and say no. And you never want to say no to a baby that makes them cry. You want to say no where they go like this. And they look at you, but you don't want to make them cry. You don't go, no. You just go, no. And then you hold their hand. If they go to and then keep holding them. If they go to hit again, no. And then you divert their attention to something else. So you never say no to a baby to the point where they cry, but you want to get the point across. I remember I was baby, I don't even know what I would have been doing, why I was doing this, but I was babysitting two babies. They weren't mine. I was just a teenager or young. I was very young. And there were two babies, so they were laying on a blanket together. One was a biter, it was biting the other one's head. And then the mom said, watch out, he's a biter. So I was trying to bite the other one's head and because they were lying. So they were just really little. And they're about, I think, eight or 10 months old. I think about eight months old. They're really little. And I grabbed that baby by the hands and I looked right at him and I said, no. And then he went to bite again and I said, no. And he was just looking at me like this. And then he went like this. He went and stopped himself. I have never seen that before in such a young baby. Like after a couple of times, he learned. Doesn't mean he wouldn't bite again. But in that moment, he didn't bite. I was shocked at that. I thought he was too little to learn that. But it was just the way I went, no. And then he went and no. And then didn't do it again. Isn't that amazing? Of course, he was probably biting after that. But I, when I was right there, he didn't try and bite again. Okay, you're going to hate me. I'm sorry, Stephanie. Two-year-old bullies are a very patient toy poodle. Help. I, if you can't keep the dog safe, I would rehome it. I've actually, I've had families who have rehomed pets because they can't keep them safe. Um, we always had pets and my kids knew you don't go near that bird cage because it might scare the bird. It was, I always get rescues. So they're always, you know, scared. Uh, so I said, you don't go near that bird cage. You can talk to the bird from this far away and you never pick up the dog. We had a little dog and I said, you never pick her up. Only mom can do that. And they could sit on the couch and, with the dog in their lap when I put the dog there. But um, yeah, I, I taught my kids from a really little age. I was really firm on that. I, I'm keeping these animals safe. So um, yeah, sorry about that, but I'm such an animal lover. Yeah, the word no is underrated. And the word no, they don't really listen to you so much, but it's more about your tone of voice, your eye contact, like when you're saying no to a baby or even a little kid. It's no. And you're very, they, and then they'll usually laugh at you and as they get older. Ah, and you're just like very serious. Don't get pulled into that. They're just trying to see, you know, ah, what's going on here? So yeah. 